Hey guys, today we are going to review personal financial literacy. So let's start with simple interest. The formula for simple interest is I equals PRT. And that just finds the interest. And then if you want to find the total amount in the account, you have to add the principal back. So let's look at number one. It says Rachel wants to open a savings account with a deposit of $10,000. Her bank will pay her 2.1% simple interest for seven years. How much interest will Rachel have earned at the end of seven years? So we are just finding I and it is simple interest. So the formula that I will need for that is I equals PRT. So I'll need the principal, the rate, and the time. The principal is her $10,000 initial deposit. The rate is 2.1%, which as a decimal, you can move the decimal back twice, or you can divide it by 100. It'd be 0 0.021, and then the time in years is seven years. So to find the interest, I'll multiply these things together. I'll do 10,000 times the rate of 0 0.021 times the time of seven. And that will tell me how much interest Rachel will earn at the end of seven years. So 10,000 times 0 0.021 times seven is $1,470. Number two says Robert takes out a $17,000 loan for a new car. The loan charges 6.5% simple interest. What is the total amount Robert will pay if he takes out a six-year loan? So we are finding the total amount on simple interest. So I'm going to have to do simple interest I equals PRT first. And then to find the total amount, I will take that interest and add the principal back to it. So to find the interest first, I'll need the principal, which is that $17,000 loan. I'll need the rate, which is 6.5%. And 6.5% as a decimal would be 0 0.065. And then the time in years is six years. So let's find the interest by multiplying these things together. 17,000 times 0 0.065 times a time of six. So my interest will be 17,000 times 0 0.065 times six. So the interest is $6,630. But the question was asking for the total amount. So now I need to add the principal of 17,000 back to that. And the total amount that Robert would pay for that car loan would be $23,630. Next thing we're going to review is compound interest. So the formula for compound interest is A equals P times 1 plus R to the T. That finds total amount. Then if you just want the interest, how much the money grew, you take that total amount and subtract the principal out from it. So number three says Larry invested $3,175 into a savings account that pays 4.75% interest compounded annually. How much interest will Larry earn at the end of five years? So we're dealing with compound interest and we just want the interest. So I will use the compound interest formula to find the total amount. And after I find the total amount to find the interest, I'll subtract the principal from it. So let's find the total amount first. I'll need the principal, which is 3,175. I'll need the rate which is 4.75% and I need to change that to a decimal instead of a percentage. So I'm gonna divide by 100 and I get 0 0.0475 and then I need the time in years, which would be five years. So now I can find the total amount by doing the principal 3,175 times one plus the rate of 0 0.0475 to the time of five. And that will tell me the total amount 
after five years. So 3175 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.0475 to the fifth power. And the total amount is $4,004.18. But this question was asking for the interest. So now I need to subtract the principal back out from that. So I need to subtract 3,175. And I get $829.18. Number four says Lynette took out a $32,000 loan to remodel her kitchen. The loan charges 2.25% interest compounded annually. What is the total amount Lynette will pay back if she pays back the loan in 10 years? So I'm just finding the total amount and it is compound interest. So all I'll have to do here is the compound interest formula P times one plus R to the T. So I'll need the principal, which is that $32,000. I'll need the rate, which is 0, 0.0, sorry. It is 2.25%, but I need to convert it to a decimal by dividing by 100. And I get 0 0.0225, and then the time she's going to pay it back in 10 years. So let's find the total amount she's going to pay back after 10 years by doing 32,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0225 to the 10th. So 32,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0225 to the 10th she would pay a total of $39,974.51 after 10 years. Okay, let's talk about mixed interest. So if you notice, the simple interest formula calculates just the interest and the compound interest formula calculates the total amount. So if you are comparing compound and simple interest, you need to make sure you're comparing the same thing either the total amount for both of them or the interest for both of them. So number five says Mary wants to open a savings account with a deposit of $5,000. Mary will not make any additional deposits or withdrawals after she opens the account. Her bank account offers, or her bank offers two different savings accounts. Account M pays 4.1% simple annual interest and account N pays 4.4% interest compounded annually. Will Mary earn more interest with account M or account N at the end of 10 years? How much more interest will she earn? So I need to find the interest for both of these accounts. Account M is simple interest. So for account M, all I'll have to do is I equals PRT to find the interest. Account N is compound interest. So I'll have to do the compound interest formula which finds the total amount. So then to find the interest, I'll have to take that total amount and subtract out the principal. So let's find the interest for both of these. Um, it looks like the principal is 5,000 for both of them. And the time is going to be 10 for both of them. And then account M has an interest rate of 4.1% and 4.1 divided by 100 is 0 0.041 and then account N is 4.4% and 4.4 divided by 100 is 0 0.044. So I have everything I need to find the interest for both of them. Principal was 5,000 time was 10 and they both have different rates. So let's start with account M. It's simple interest, so I would do I equals 5,000 times the rate of 0 0.041 times the time of 10 years. And that will tell me how much interest account M has. So 5,000 times 0 0.041 times 10. So after 10 years, account M is going to earn $2,050. Let's figure out account N. 
account N is compound interest. So I'm going to find the total amount first by doing 5,000 times 1 plus the rate for count N was 0 0.044 to the 10th. So 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.044 to the 10th is about $7,690.86. Now to find the interest, I need to subtract out the $5,000 principal. And the interest on account N would be $2,690.86. So if we are comparing these two, account M earned $2,050 and account N earned $2,960. So account N earns more and to figure out how much more I need to subtract them. So $2,690 0.86 minus 2050 will tell me how much more account N earned. So 2,690 and 86 cents minus 2050 is $640. So account N earned $640 and 86 cents more in interest than account N. Okay, last thing we're going to look at is the cost of college. So remember, college, you need to consider your expenses, such as tuition, the cost for your classes, room and board, and books. And then there are several ways to pay for colleges, grants, savings, scholarships, and loans. If you take out loans, though, you must pay interest with your loans. So let's look at this scenario here. It says the total cost of attending an out-of-state university is $24,000 for the first year. A student's aunt will pay for one quarter of this cost. An academic scholarship will pay for another $12,000. A student will save $450 every month to pay off the remaining cost at the end of 12 months. Will this be enough? If it's not enough, how much should she be saving every month for 12 months in order to get the cost for her first year covered? So let's figure out how much is already going to be covered by these two things. A student's aunt will pay for one quarter of the cost. So that means I need to take the 24,000 and divide it by four. So the student's aunt is going to pay for 6,000. And the scholarship will pay for 12,000. So I am going to do 24,000 minus what the aunt's going to pay, so 6,000 minus the scholarship of $12,000 to figure out how much the first year will cost. So 24,000 minus 6,000 minus 12,000 is 6,000. So that student is going to have $6,000 to pay for the first year of college. They are going to save $450 every month to pay off the remaining costs at the end of 12 months. And they wanna know if that will be enough. So let's figure out how much money that's going to be. I'm gonna do 450 times 12. They're going to save $5,400. So no, it would not be enough. Let's figure out how much she would need to save, how much she should be saving in order to get the cost paid if she saves every month for 12 months. So remember she needs $6,000 more. So I'm gonna do 6,000 divided by, she's gonna save every month for 12 months. And I get $500. So no, it would not be enough. She needs to save $500 every month in order to reach her goal of paying for her whole first year.